Hey guys, in today's video, I want to teach you how to beat a pusher. Milan, can you uh, play like a pusher? Yes. Like a recreational level pusher? Yes. Because I want to demonstrate like how to play against someone like that. Okay. So just like, just you know how to do it. Like just yep, dink yep. the ball around and yeah, throw in a... Yeah, slow it down. Yeah, like throw, throw in a couple of moon balls here and there. And let's see what I can do. It doesn't help that it's like super windy yeah, today. So we never help. Uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, before I demonstrate how to beat a pusher, I want to tell you one story that's going to relate to the problems that a lot of tennis players experience at all levels, by the way. A few years ago, I was reading the stats for the average forehand speed at the Australian Open. Australian Open it used to keep track of the serve speed, uh, forehand speed, backhand speed. And there was an interesting stat that I read about the slowest forehand on the WTA Tour. On average, it was around 50 miles an hour, and that was Monica Nicolescu. Now, you're probably thinking, how is that possible? How can someone at that elite level have a forehand so slow? Well, Monica would slice all her forehands. And now, this goes to show you that that's basically a push shot, a very slow shot. And even these elite level WTA players struggle with shots like that <laughs> now even on the atp tour even those guys have trouble with push shots now here's the scenario just picture any of these youngsters like a nick Kyrgios or a bublik uh, doing an underhand serve it's becoming quite a trend to do underhand serves and you know what's the interesting thing is that they win a lot of points with the underhand serve and that serve is traveling what i don't know 30 40 miles an hour and yet, these elite level ATP players will still mess up those shots and they will give the underhead server a lot of free points. So that goes to show you that pushing at any level of the game is an excellent tactic. It just simply works because players will self-destruct for three reasons. Reason number one is technical deficiencies. Reason number two is shot selection. And reason number three is the overall mental state of the player. Now, when we're talking about the high level, players really don't have technical deficiencies. So basically, what they struggle with when they play pushers is basically shot selection and the mental state they're in. And these two things can be connected to each other. Now, at the rec level, players will struggle with all three of these problem areas when facing pushers. And when it comes to technical deficiencies, the problem is that when your opponent hits the ball very slowly and is pushing the ball around, you don't have the pace of the incoming ball to work with and you're going to have to generate your own pace. And generally, the faster you swing, the more you will miss if you happen to have technical deficiencies on your shots. Now, of course, shot selection and the overall mental state of a player is something that a lot of rec players struggle with. So the way you are going to improve your chances of beating a pusher is to improve in those three categories. You have to make sure that you have sound fundamentals on all your strokes. You have to make sure that you execute the right shot selection. And uh, most importantly, you have to be in the right state of mind. And what a lot of you guys do wrong at the record level is avoid the pusher. Every club around the world has pushers that everyone hates to play against. I will say that even back in the day when I used to play high level tennis in Germany, there were some pushers that everyone hated to play as well. Now, one of these pushers happened to be one of my best friends and I practiced with this guy three times a week. And here's what happened. Not only did I get used to that type of game style, but I started understanding on how to beat someone like that. What it takes, especially from the mental level, to beat someone like that. So what you should do is the exact opposite of what everybody else does. Everybody avoids these type of players and you should seek them out play with pushers as much as you can yes it's not gonna be fun but what will happen is you will start to understand what it takes to beat someone like that by avoiding to play pushers you are always going to continue to struggle against them give me a few lobs a couple lobs ah, okay so guys, step number one is playing more pushers, getting used to that type of game style. Step number two is understanding shot selection. See, the problem is that pushers will give you balls. Go ahead. Pushers will give you balls that you shouldn't try to hit winners on. That's the tricky thing. 
for example, balls in the half court that are low, you shouldn't try to hit those type of balls for a winner because you're gonna miss and you're gonna ultimately self-destruct. So shot selection is something that's absolutely crucial to be able to beat pushers at the rec level. What you wanna wait for is what high level players wait for and that is a high ball that sits in the middle of the court. Now these type of balls get absolutely destroyed at the high level, however, at the recreational level, players don't like hitting those type of balls because they're not used to hitting balls higher. People love to take the ball around the waist at the rec level. So what ends up happening is that when they get the ball higher, sitting right there for them to put it away, they end up doing one of the two things. They either let the ball drop down and now it's gonna be very difficult to put the ball away because you're close to the net you're closer to the other baseline, you're gonna sail the ball long. The ball doesn't have enough, enough space to fall into the court. And players will attempt to hit a high ball, but they simply don't have the correct fundamentals on hitting high balls. And they mess up their half court game in that way as well. So what you gotta do is practice the situation that the pusher is gonna put you in. You have to understand that this is gonna be different from your regular practice. You're gonna to have to play balls that you are uncomfortable with, especially when we're talking about high balls, whether it be from the service line or whether it be from the baseline. You're gonna have to learn how to put the ball away when it's higher because that is what's required to be able to beat a pusher. Eventually, even if they're giving you tons of low balls, there will be one eventually where it's a little bit higher and you can put it away. That's what happens at the high level. Players wait for the ball, for the ball to be a little bit higher and then they crush it. Unfortunately, at the rec level, high balls are a big problem. So the solution to you beating pushers is you have to improve your ability to handle the ball when it's up higher. Milan Almoje, si spreman, ya ću prvi servirat, okay? And guys, that right there, it's a perfect example of the ball being lower. It, what happens a lot of times is because you're hitting the ball hard from that part of the court, you're applying top spin, the ball does not have enough space to fall into the baseline. So from those positions in the court, when the ball is lower, you cannot go for the winner outright because you're gonna be making a lot of mistakes. Instead, what, should be, what you should be doing is placing the ball and wait for the chance for the ball to be a little bit higher up. And guys, what I did there was hit a winner from behind the baseline. Now this is an okay thing to do if you have good fundamentals, if you have good confidence over your strokes, but generally at the rec level, I would avoid trying to go for winners when you're behind the baseline. Wait when the ball is a little bit shorter, you're inside the court, it's gonna be a lot easier to hit a winner from there. And that right there is a perfect example of how to construct a point against a pusher. That first forehand that I hit was a little bit lower. I didn't go for the winner. I applied a lot of topspin. The second one was a little bit higher and I was able to hit the ball with a different trajectory, go a little bit more from a high position to a low position and I was able to hit an easy winner for that reason. Now guys, remember when you're further back in the court, what I said about the service line doesn't apply because from back here, you can rip even when the ball is lower because you have more court to play into. That's not a pusher, that's too good. Okay, great example of what happens to a lot of people, including myself by the way, when a ball comes slow and a little bit higher to the backhand side. That is gonna be a problem area for most players. So you got two options. You have to try to hit your back end the best that you can possibly hit it. Put a lot of effort into hitting the shot because it's gonna require more body action. That ball has absolutely no pace. Or if you're in a little better shape, you can try to run around your back end and hit a forehand. Now how about coming to the net against pushers? We're here, you have to be careful. You have to be very selective because a lot of players at the recreational level will come to the net too much and they're exposed therefore. So you have to be very selective when to come to the net.
I just picture what happens to a lot of ATP players when they receive an underhand serve. Underhand serve is very low. Now they don't go for a winner on that ball because they know chances of missing are very high. So they kind of scoop the ball up, come to the net or apply heavy topspin out of the forearm, come to the net. And now they're not in such a good position at the net. So when it comes to coming to the net against pushers, avoid positions like that where you're being drawn in rather than coming in on your own terms. So you always want to come to the net as an aggressor on your own terms, dictating play with your opponent being in defensive positions. Okay, here what I'm going to try is serve and volley. Now again, this is not something you want to overdo, but every now and then it's good to come in against the pusher. Off your serve. Oh, ah, windy day. Now you can do the same thing off your kick serve towards the back end. Some of these pushers might have problems with their back end or maybe they're slicing everything. So having a good kick and serve and volleying off the kick is a good tactic against pushers. But remember, only every now and then. You don't want your opponent to get used to it. Use this as a surprise tactic. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Ah, ah, oh. Oh. What? That's not a pusher. That was too good to return. Get out of here, pusher! Guys, patience is key against the moon baller. You saw those balls popping up high. I took my time. I didn't go for the outright winner. I waited and I slowly snuck my way in by placing the ball in the corners, continuing to be aggressive and not go for the winner. Outright, eventually, I got a super easy put away shot closer net and I was able to hit the winner. A lot of people want to be able to blow pushers away with a couple of shots. No, you're going to have to do a lot of work. Those balls are very unpredictable at the push is sending you you're gonna have to move your feet a lot and you're gonna have to exert a lot of energy so beating a pusher is gonna be really hard work was long ah! was that in Okay, thank you. It's always nice to play a pusher who is also fair, who is not cheating you. So that ball looked pretty close to being out, but he called it in. Now balls around the net can be a little bit tricky. And the best thing that you can do with those type of balls, instead of looking for depth, look for angles. Because just like I explained on half court shots, you have the same problem when you're closer to the net. It's easy to spray the ball long. So instead of go doing that, you're going to look for angles and get the easy put away. And guys, part of the hard work that is required to beat a pusher is you running around your backhand because the vast majority of players has a better forehand than backhand. And what you'll have to do is hit your forehand instead of your backhand, which requires you to move your feet and, and get around the backhand as often as possible. Guys, another mistake that a lot of recreational players commit when they play pushers who like to send the ball a little bit higher is that they try to take the ball on the rise. And this is one of the biggest causes of errors at the rec level. Well, you have to understand that a ball like that will not penetrate through the court. So it's highly unnecessary to take it early. You wait for that ball to come down from the apex. It's gonna decelerate a lot more and it's gonna be a lot easier for you uh, to put pressure on your opponent. And guys, let's face it, your physical conditioning is going to have to be excellent in order to have success against pushers because rallies are going to be long. You're going to have to exert a lot of effort because you don't have the pace working for you. You have to use your own body weight. So you're going to have to be in good shape to have a chance against a good defensive player. Now guys, the dink serve, is also something that a lot of 
recreational players struggle with. The first thing you do is adjust your positioning. If you know your opponent dinks a lot of serves, no point to stay around the baseline. You're going to slide inside the baseline. And now here's what you got to do. You're going to have to have super high intensity. Number one mistake I see at the rec level is that players get nonchalant on the return of serve. They don't have a lot of intensity and now they're scrambling up to the return and have to do improvisations because of it. Guys, high intensity, readiness is going to be the key to handle a really weak dink serves. You're going to have to move your feet a lot and get yourself in a perfect position every time. Guys, running around the back end is good, but that's not something you can do all the time because you expose the middle, so you should hit back end returns as well. Milan. Thank you so much, man. You did a really good job as a pusher. Thank you, Coach. Next time Thank we play, you. you're going to be allowed to hit winners on me. Okay. As usual, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Coach. So, guys, there you have it. That is how you play against pusher. There's a lot of variables, but one thing that stands out is the three pillars that you have to possess in order to be able to beat pushers. That is, you have to get rid of your technical deficiencies, you have to have proper shot selection, and your mental state has to be right. On top of all that, I'm gonna add that the effort that is required to play against a pusher is enormous. You're gonna have to spend a lot of energy and therein lies the problem that people don't wanna spend so much energy. They wanna end the point in one or two shots and that is not how you defeat a pusher. That's how a pusher exploits you and makes you beat yourself so what needs to happen is the following you need to get yourself in the optimal physical condition and once you're on the court you have to prepare for the fight You have to tell yourself, I'm ready to stand on this court for three hours and every point is going to go 20 balls or more. That is the type of mentality that you need if you want to have a chance to be the pusher. Anything less than that, if you come to the court with the mindset that you're going to be able to come to the net on everything and put volleys away or that you're going to be blasting winners left and right, that is most likely not going to happen. What you're going to do in those circumstances, you're going to be selecting the wrong shots. Your mental state is obviously wrong. On top of that, if you have technical deficiency, this is going to lead to something that happens to everyone across the world, and that is losing to a defensive player, i.e. pusher. <laughs>